Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, insofar as I understand, it's uh, beginning tomorrow. That's our time. And that's an appeal process where it's gone up to an appeal court from a lower court where the lower court judge uh, held that he should be extradited and that was automatically appealed by Julian Assange's defence team to an appeal court. Um, he still has one more avenue of appeal available, which is the uh, what is now called the Supreme Court in the UK, um, uh, formerly called, or should I say, the Supreme Court uh, of England and Wales, which was formerly known as the House of Lords. So um, it's not finished yet. And it'll be very interesting to see what happens um, over the next day or two. Um, they are very, very closely connected. Um, it's the allegations in Sweden which have led to an extradition process. Um, and, but. The whole situation with the extradition is that it's part of what is known as a European arrest warrant system. Now, that was set up with um, uh, some 20 or more uh, European Union nations and Gibraltar uh, as part of a framework agreement, which I think was drafted, if my memory serves me correctly, in 2002 and was signed on to by all of the EU members which was then incorporated into their domestic legislation, which in the case of the UK is simply called the uh, Extradition Act UK, I think 2004. Um, the allegations um, form part of the extradition warrant where a form is filled in to indicate what the allegations are. And <clears throat> that becomes the primary reason for the extradition warrant and the extradition process. However, it, it must be said that the strength of the prosecution case in Sweden uh, is not a direct relevant, uh, relevant factor in the extradition process. That's the most important thing for people to grasp. I didn't grasp that until um, um, a bit later in the piece after this whole process started. Although it can be said that the strength of the prosecution case was a very important part for his, uh, Julian Assange's bail application, but um, technically it's not, the strength of the case is not a part of the extradition hearing. Um, it's, um, as I indicated, it's only part of the bail, but there are human rights dimensions where the history of the case and the prosecution case does have relevance insofar as the human rights dimensions are concerned, which are incorporated into the uh, European arrest warrant system, into the domestic legislation of the UK. Um, and that's one of the areas where I believe the defence team of Julian Assange will be looking for appeal points. Uh, Julian Assange is actually charged, he's not charged, but he's under suspicion of, of rape and uh, sexual coercion and sexual molestation and also molestation. I think it's four, four suspicions. They threw out uh, two, he, there was actually more suspicion, but the Swedish court did not accept that in, in the arrest warrant which is the basis for the uh, European arrest warrant with four charges. Oh, sorry, four suspicions. I, I sorry, I didn't get the last. Yeah, I can hear you, but it's it's just slightly bad connection. Oh. 
Okay. Uh, in the Swedish language, uh, and, the, in, and when people talk about consent, it's a mix-up uh, between consent and want. Very many Swedish people cannot distinguish between consent and want. It's a... They say, I didn't want that, thinking that it means I didn't consent to it. It's like, a, I don't like to do dishes. I don't want to do dishes, but I consent to do it because it gives me some other advantages in, in a relationship. Do you understand what I mean? I do. Yeah. And, and this, is, this is very interesting when we talk, in, talk about uh, sexual crimes, because very many people say, oh, I didn't really want to have sex, thinking that that means I didn't consent to the sex. So there are actually many uh, complaints with the police uh, where there is no case. It's just that somebody didn't want to, but in fact they consented to the sex. Yes. It's it, in Sophia's case. It's obvious that the, uh, this is the case. She wanted to have sex with a condom, but she consented to sex without a condom. And and this is this is the the matter uh, as it is. I mean, some you think you think you didn't want to. Me thinking that that means you didn't consent to. So it's, it's obvious in Sophia's case. The chronology. Uh, Okay, I think I get your question. Uh, what's important is the action. Anna says that the crime occurred on the night of August 13. The crayfish party was on August 14, and she moved out of the apartment on Thursday, August 19. So Julian Assange stayed in her flat from 11th of August until the 20th of August. Anna says to the police that Julian committed a crime against her on the 13th of August. That's, that's what she says. She didn't report this until the 20th of August. That's a week later. In between here, you had the great... Anna organized the crayfish party for Julian uh, on the 14th. Uh, and then in the evening or at night, she tweeted that she was very pleased to sit around with the coolest, smartest people. To me, that indicates if, if you're a victim of the crime on the 13th of August, you don't organize a party for, for the perpetrator, and you don't talk about how pleased you are to be in his company. Uh, that, it just doesn't happen like that. Yes. 
Uh, first of all, looking at what, uh, from what's said in the police interviews, I cannot see any crime or any actual uh, suspicions. What, what the prosecutor says in the Anna Adlin case, it's, it's a case of sexual coercion that somebody uses violence or force in order to uh, make somebody uh, or make somebody endure a sexual act which is not intercourse. I can't, I mean, when I read the, the police interview, I can't understand what, what the sexual act is. I mean, they talk about, they wrestle uh, about the condom prior to sexual intercourse. It's okay to wrestle about the condom. In order to make it a crime, you have, after the wrestling about the condom, then you have to commit the sexual act. And I can't see what sexual act they talk about. I mean, it's, I don't understand it. it it's just nonsense. I, I, it, and that's so bewildering for me, because these people are actually, they are professionals. And, and they, I, I can't understand it.